Welcome to Seize the Mains by Raj Malhotra's IS Academy. I'm Surbhi Sardana and this is Season 3 of our Daily Answer Writing Initiative. See, Seize the Mains is, uh, you know, an initiative that runs in direct coordination with our website. Uh, our website is rajisacademy.com. This is a screenshot of our website. If you click on the link in the description of rajayasacademy.com, uh, you find this mains answer writing section uh, that appears on the website. Click on it and it will take you to this landing page as it appears on the screen. Uh, if you look closely, uh, you know this initiative, uh, Seize the Mains initiative has been coordinated. This page uh, has been ascribed entirely for Seize the Mains initiative. Every day we discuss one question uh, from Maine's perspective for your civil services journey and we also discuss a model answer for it. We frame a model answer with the help of our team experts and that answer appears here. We teach you how to write a good answer for the question that appears and these questions are entirely from current affairs. Today it is the 170th question of Seize the Mains that we are taking today in season 3. Uh, we had two seasons pre previously and the playlist is available on our channel. So, 170 question. Uh, 170th question uh, have uh, 170 questions have appeared on the website with their model answers not only this under the comment section in the comment section which appears under every question you can uh, share your own answers with us write your answers try to write your answers and enhance your mains answer writing practice and post your answers on the website and our team will evaluate those answers give back uh, their feedback in the next few days entirely free of cost so that's how see the mains works uh, Ecologically sensitive zones, that is the topic for today. So, ESZs or ecologically sensitive zones, they have been in news currently. And, uh, you know, uh, Supreme Court back in June, it recommended, it declared that it ordered basically the state governments that uh, an eco uh, ecologically sensitive zone of one kilometer has to be demarcated uh, with respect to all wildlife uh, sanctuaries for every national park and biosphere, biosphere reserves. So, there are uh, many states which do not have a lot of land boundary outside their national parks or bios or uh, wildlife sanctuaries and there are human habitations uh, near these uh, protected areas. So, yes, definitely they cannot demarcate compulsorily a given, uh, a given area of zone as ecologically sensitive zone and you know a lot of farmers especially in districts of Kerala had been protesting. So, a question has come up that uh, what is the relevance of these zones? The question for day 170 is what are eco sensitive zones, uh, why are they important for Indian biodiversity, answer in 150 words. So see this is a very straightforward question, uh, no curves, no turns in this question. First of all in our introduction we will define what eco sensitive zones are and we will take uh, one body paragraph, we will write few pointers, how are they important for Indian biodiversity or safeguarding Indian biodiversity. So, let us define eco sensitive zones first, let us see what is the definition that they hold. Eco sensitive zones are ecologically fragile areas, uh, they are also known as ecologically fra fragile areas they, and these are areas notified by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change around protected areas, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. So, these are notified by the Ministry of Environment and they are created basically as shock absorbers shock absorbers for the protected areas to minimize the negative impact on the fragile ecosystem. For example, for safeguarding biodiversity inside a national park, the ecosystem is very fragile. So, if a road passes by in the, you know, peripheral area of national park, that would definitely impact the biodiversity in, inside the national park. So, to prevent that damage, uh, you know, there is, these are kind of buffer zones that are created or shock absorber zones. So, uh, to minimize the negative impact on the fragile ecosystems by certain human activities taking place nearby. So, I think the definition is very clear. So, these uh, two, three lines, they should also, uh, they will also form your introduction. Now, moving on to the significance part or the second part of our question that why are they important for Indian biodiversity? Let us look at this. So, uh, first of all, they are important for biodiversity because of the following reasons. See, these lines are important. These lines are known as linkage points and these are important before you introduce your body paragraph. First of all, uh, these act, these areas, they act as a transition zone from areas requiring higher protection to those requiring lesser protection. So, the first title here or your, uh, you know, keyword here would be that they are transition zones. So, definitely uh, the shock absorber term has been given in the introduction. You can write about transition zones here that the amount of damage that happens inside a protected area that reduces. Secondly, they minimize the impact of 
urbanization and other developmental activities on threatened biodiversity. So, that is very important that any kind of activity from mining, from development of industries, from uh, you know to development of new kinds of urban settlements or uh, any other type of development that is happening that impact gets reduced if you have ecologically sensitive areas around these protected sites. Thirdly and most important point here is that they can help in in situ conservation of some kinds of species of biodiversity whether that is animals or that kind of plant and that is a plant. For example, you have this as a protected area and you safeguard this protected area with the help of an ecologically sensitive zone and all the development that is happening is it is outside this particular area. So, basically because of the protection that your this uh, core area this has got you can actually conserve a lot of endangered species in exactly their pristine nature, in exactly their pristine environment where they are naturally found. And yes, there have been many species of you know birds, animals and plants which have been restored back to their natural status from like uh, their IUCN status of endangered or critically endangered. Their IUCN statuses have been uh, brought to a less threatened category uh, by the efforts of uh, with the development of ecologically sensitive zone. So, in C2 conservation which deals with conservation of an endangered species in its natural habitat. For example, the conservation of one horned one horned rhinoceros, rhinoceros of Kaziranga National Park of Assam. Uh, their conservation has been carried out successfully. Uh, fourthly, they help to minimize forest depletion and man-made conflict. See, man-made uh, man-made uh, man uh, man animal conflict, not man-made conflict, man animal conflict. See, man animal conflict is a major reason, a uh, major reason of deaths of important wildlife. For example, uh, most importantly in the case of elephants, because of the ca uh, because of cases of man animal conflict, a lot of uh, many numbers of biodiversity they are lost on a daily basis and that is a huge problem for India because first of all yes we are an ever growing population uh, we have surpassed China as the most populous country of the world. Secondly there is always a crunch of resources. Thirdly wherever there is uh, there are human settlements there is a presence of dense biodiversity as well. So, man animal conflict or human animal conflict is something that is very prevalent in India. So, basically they help to minimize forest depletion because obviously you have this buffer zone. Uh, the protected area is there. So, even if you know some biodiversity, some animals travel from this core area to this outer area, an ecologically sensitive zone uh, where you know less development is taking place, there are no roads or very less roads or very you know uh, roads where there is not a lot of traffic density. So, here uh, because of the presence of ecologically sensitive zone, the probability of man animal conflict has been reduced, has uh, can be reduced. So, uh, fifth one, uh, there are many, you know, indigenous groups or tribal communities which actually help in safeguarding the forest. They have traditional forest there. They help in safeguarding the biodiversity. So, their culture and their sustenance can also be uh, taken care of and uh, that can be preserved. So, protected areas are based on the core and buffer model of management through which local area communities are also protected and benefited and hence your uh, in turn resultantly your biodiversity gets benefited. Many tribal groups for example, the Lepchas of Sikkim will significantly benefit by the demarcation of more and more ESGs or wider uh, ecologically sensitive zones. Now, see uh, the significance part this you know this part will definitely make up for 150 words. Now, significance part ends here uh, you can definitely add more examples from current affairs or from your own region from your own region or from, from your own state uh, you can definitely add more examples to all these 5 points. But in the conclusion talk about the other side also there has been a plea by uh, Kerala government in the Supreme Court and Supreme Court would hear, uh, hear on that and you know there have been a lot of protests going on with regards to or against ecologically sensitive zones. So, uh, talk about the other side in one or two lines and then conclude with a neutral line. So, however, there are many issues associated with ESGs and one size fits all approach of one kilometer demarcation that was the order by Supreme Court that is uh, that might not be appropriate, uh, appropriate. They create abrupt changes in the lives of local inhabitants who have been living there for years. So, yes, uh, much of you know your biodiversity 
it never develops in isolation with human beings. There are a lot of species of uh, plants and animals which actually dwell more when there are human habitations around because those human beings also whether it is tribals or forest dwellers, they also help in the conservation of biodiversity or in their protection. So, whenever a such, such an order is passed by any authority, there are many people at the local level who suffer, whose occupations, whose livelihoods they are at stake. So, this is the reason that the high range uh, areas of Kerala, particularly areas in Iduki, Vayana, Kottayam and uh, Pathanam and Thitta districts had been witnessing hartals by various farmer groups. There is a need for rethinking on the impacts of the environmental policies at the local level, the type and prospects of local participation and most importantly, the prospects of alternate income generating opportunities for successful conservation initiatives. Also, with regards to ecologically sensitive zones, many acts, uh, uh, many acts entail that you know demarcation of ecologically sensitive zones is compulsory. But not many states have actually demarcated e ecologically sensitive zones because state governments they request the central government to demar uh, for ecologically sensitive zones, and only when it is requested by state governments can central government, uh, you know. Uh, label a certain area as ecologically sensitive zone. So, that is a problem coming in that uh, ESZs uh, they are not marked in all the states or in many of the states. So, that is your answer for the day. This an entire answer has been uploaded on the website rajaisacademy.com. The link to the website is present in the description. Do send us your answers, check out the other questions that have been discussed on this initiative till date and I will see you with another discussion tomorrow at 9 pm on Seize the Mains. Stay tuned and all the best.